t today we're we're dealing with uh, another in the in the series of don't get stuck. And today's don't get stuck is don't get stuck with bad friends. Okay. How many of you have ever had a bad friend? Please raise your hand. This is an amazing, ama this is amazing, it's awful. I, I'm sorry for all of you. Uh, uh, I've, I've had a few bad friends too. Uh, uh, have I got stories for you? Um, uh, I'll never forget... Um, when I was in grade school, I, 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 ha I, I have to admit that I was teased quite a bit. And one of my lead uh, pain in the side kind of guys was named Tad. Isn't that, I mean, what parent names their, their child Tad, you know? <laughs> and... and, and uh, and, and honestly, this guy was built like a truck for a sixth grader, you know. I'm pretty sure, because of what I sensed was his lack of intelligence, that he'd been held back many, many, many years, you know. <laughs> which, would, which, would, which would account for his large and enormous size. And his ability to put my head into the bricks on the side of the building over and over again. Well, anyway, we were coming towards the end of the year, and, and one of my friends who thought he was being a good friend decided he was going to get together a whole group of friends. And the plan was that at, at lunch out in the, in the, in the uh, recess yard, they were going to hold him down while I beat him up. And we thought we had a good plan. We thought we had a good idea going here. And, and unfortunately, the teachers found out. And so uh, I, I, got, I got called in to, to speak with the teachers. And, and said, Steve, you shouldn't be doing this. And, I, and I, I'm thinking to myself, wait a minute. Where were you when he was banging my head against the wall? You know? This is a bad time for you to show up right now, anyway. But it didn't happen, and, and, uh, and, I, and I discovered that my friends were probably not, not exactly correct in, in, in their idea of how to help me. You know, it's interesting, uh, one, of the, one of the people that I like to listen to a lot, he, he describes the body of Christ this way. It is friends and friends of friends. Think about that. It's just friends and friends of friends. That's how we are as we gather. I might not know all of you yet, and many of you may not know me yet, but evidently you're here because you know somebody who's, who's here and they know, and we know one another that way. It's just the way the body of Christ moves. So I, I did a little scientific, uh, actually a non-scientific study about what makes a bad friend. I asked a few people. Here's one. Someone who wants you to be something that you're not. Huh? Now, that's, that's a tough thing to deal with. And then here's another one. Someone who pulls you away from what you know you need to do. I'm sorry, from what you know you need to be or what you know you need to do. So if, if they're pulling you away from what you know you need to be doing or, or being, that's, that's not a great friendship. Um... I had a I had a friend uh, earlier in our marriage. We'll call him Phil. We're going to call him Phil because his name was definitely not Phil. Okay, got that? <laughs> and uh, he's one of these guys that kept tempting to me to do stuff I wasn't supposed to be doing. Clearly, and the way he would do it is 
He'd call me and he'd say, Steve, let's, let's go run the Sandy River at flood stage. It'll be fun. And, and we did, and it was a near disaster. I ended up almost hypothermic, and, and, uh, and thank God after that, my kayak floated downstream somewhere and mysteriously never to be found again. Thank God. I, was, I, I think I was due to, to hurt myself worse if I had kept on going. Um, another, another time, the same friend called me again. Hey, Steve. We're going to go rock climbing uh, over at the park, and we'd like you to come join us. And uh, it was, it was uh, I, you know, I'm thinking, I, I don't know. Last time that you t- asked me to do something with you, it didn't work out so good. And he said, it'll be fun. Okay, well, shucks, if it's going to be fun, I don't want to miss out, you know. FOMO, right? FOMO, fear of missing out, right? Okay. So I went and, and uh, I, I enjoyed rock climbing and I, I wasn't necessarily great at it. But, uh, you know, I, I was on belay and everything was okay as far as I knew. Uh, unfortunately, his, his son was actually my belay. And as I'm up close to the top, my fingers literally slip. So I yell all the things that you're supposed to yell, falling! And nothing happened. I just kept falling. And, and, and suddenly I, I hear something down below, and, and uh, when, I, when, I, when I hit bottom, you know, the, the, the stretchy rope you know, kind of bounces, you know? And I'm thinking, uh, this is getting pretty close. And about eight inches from the bottom, my, my body... You know, and, and the rope went, went back up and settled down, and I got off and turned around and looked, and here was, here was my friend's son laying over on the side, and here was my friend laying on the ground holding onto the rope desperately. I'm not sure how that exactly occurred, but I was thankful that I was alive. And from then on, whenever he said, it'll be fun, I said, no, thank you. <laughs> So, so I want you to think, think in your mind. What what makes what makes a, a bad friend according to scripture? Here here's a few. One, he tempts you to do the things that you know you're not supposed to be doing. Number two, he makes promises over and over, and keeps on breaking them. Number three, he gossips about you to somebody else. And, and we know that a gossip can destroy a person's life, character, friendships. Let's take a look at 1 Corinthians 15.33. Or we can just pretend like we're looking at 1 Corinthians 15, 33. It says something about, um, uh, about uh, hang on, I got it here somewhere. Uh, bad company corrupts good character. Bad company corrupts good character. So if you surround yourself, thank you very much, appreciate that, thank you. So if you surround yourself with bad company, your character is not going to stay good for very long. Now that doesn't mean that you can't minister to people that aren't believers and are, or that aren't good. But it does mean that you have to be careful. Um, you know, uh, one of the... Well, anyway... Uh, Let me try to keep going on this. Um, one of the uh, interesting things, if you think about it, and this, this is a, a fascinating piece, um, Jesus 
when he walked the earth, he, he had lots of people that would follow him, okay? And there came points in his ministry where he would say very difficult things, and some of those people would kind of scatter, you know? Uh, at one point he said, you know, uh, you cannot be part of me if you will not eat my flesh and drink my blood. He was speaking of uh, that, that connection to him that we have in the Last Supper. But he was prophesying that in a sense. But people, got, people, people saw that as a hard statement and they, and they ran. And he had his 12, he had his 12 disciples and he ministered with them and to them and taught them. But then he also had his three, right? Can you, can, can you name his three? Does everybody, do you know who they are? His three, his, his three best friends, or his three inner circle. Peter, James, and John. And, and, you, and you, how many of you got it right? Did you get it right? Yes. All right, good. So, so uh, with, with Peter and James and John, he, he, he would pull them aside into special situations with him. And the interesting thing about that is that um, later, if we look at the book of Acts, we find a very interesting thing. The church in Jerusalem was run, can you guess, can you guess by who? Peter, James. Peter, James, and John. These men that had learned from Jesus, that had been in his inner circle were trained at a, at, a, at a place where they could continue his ministry as leaders of the Jerusalem church. And you know, it's interesting, uh, there's a, a, an author, Ed Millett, who, who talks about the fact that you are or you become who you hang around with. Did he catch that? So the importance of a fellowship like this is that the people we invest in and are around will influence who we become. And specifically, uh, he, talks about, he talks about the skill of intelligently choosing those people that you trust as your inner circle of friends. So I want you to think about it for a minute. Think about who are your five best friends? Who are the people that you most trust to surround you? And what are they contributing to your life? It's very important. It's a great thing to think about. Um, it's not that we don't enjoy people, uh, other people. It's, it's that some people simply have more access to you. It's just the way life works. A lot of times that's, you know, if you're married, your wife's in that circle, you know. If you have kids, your kids may or may not be in that circle. If you have, you know, it, it's close friends. Those people, especially for believers... Uh, it is, it's important that they understand the road that you're on and how you are moving towards the image of Christ. Amen? Uh, I think also about Paul. Think about Paul when, when, when he uh, began to minister with Aquila and Priscilla. His ministry blossomed in that, in that environment because he had those that he could trust to minister alongside of him. All right? So, let's see. I, I, I don't remember if I included 1 Thessalonians 5.11 or not. Did I? No, thank you. Okay, we'll just leave that. Uh, actually, I'll, I, I'll do it right here. Uh, Paul talks about this. He says, therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as, in fact, you are doing. Isn't that a great statement? Encourage one another. Give each other courage. Contribute courage to one another. Why? 
Because we, we got a big task. We've got a city that needs to be loved. We have a neighborhood that needs to be loved. It's not just about, you know, how can I enjoy more? It's not about that. It's about learning how each of us fits in a process that contributes to the world that we've been placed in. Let's, let's take a look at Ecclesiastes 4, 9 through 10. Two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. If either of them falls down, one can help the other up. But pity anyone who falls and has no one to help them up. Friendship is extremely important. Uh, I, I, I just, uh, again, shifting now uh, from, from, ha from not getting stuck with bad friends. You know, one of the best ways to not get stuck with bad friends, make sure you have good friends. And learn to, yeah, you know, it's, it's, it's learn how to interact with good friends and, and learn how that's going to assist them and you. Um, so, uh, so, uh, Second Corinthians 6, 14 through 16, if we could. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. So when we talked about yoked, we're talking about don't, don't uh, enter into, into close, deep relationships with unbelievers. For what does righteousness and wickedness have in common? Or what fellowship can light have with darkness? What harmony is there between Christ and Belial? So, so the encouragement again is, is uh, for your deep friends, for your close friends, you want something deep that you have in common. And isn't it a joy to have deep friends who the, where the thing in common is Christ? That's a wonderful thing. It's, it, it's, it's fantastic. Fantastic. <clears throat> and then I want to talk about just a little bit about what it takes to maintain those good friendships. So if we could take a look at Colossians 3.13. Bear with each other and forgive one another. If any of you has a grievance against someone, forgive as the Lord forgave you. Wow, you know, that, that's, that's a skill. Um, and it's, and it's, essential, it's an essential skill. If we have difficulty forgiving one another, What's going to happen to our relationships? They're going to explode. They're going to fall apart. Because eventually, we'll, we'll, we'll probably offend each other at some point. I'm not going to ask for a raise of hands now of how many of you I've offended. But <clears throat> if I have, I really am sorry. <laughs> and I'm really hoping you'll forgive me. But if you don't forgive me, well, that's kind of your problem at this point, because I already apologized. <laughs> here's, here's the reality, guys. Here's the reality. There is, in the world that we live in, there's a horrible lack of forgiveness. We, we, we don't see it in common in, in, you know, we, uh, you're never going to hear about it on the news. They're, they're, they're never, you're never going to hear, well, uh, today in the Senate, 
<laughs> One senator forgave another senator. That's not going to happen in the news. It might happen behind closed doors, and that would be fantastic. Learning to forgive. And it's something that we, you know, we have to learn. It's an essential skill. It's an essential skill. And if we can't learn to forgive, if you have trouble forgiving, man, it's, it's something to get taken care of between you and God. It's an issue of prayer. It, we, we, we've got to be good at that. And if we're not good at it, guess what? Then we will not be a good friend. We will be a bad friend. It's interesting. Um, Proverbs 18.24 is a really cool, uh, I love this scripture. It says, some friendships do not last, but some friends are more loyal than brothers. Isn't that awesome? How many of you have found that true, man? I have. I'm totally in on that, man. But not, nothing like good friends, you know. I got two brothers, you know, and, and we get along, we, you know. Uh, but, you know, I've got, you know, one is in, one is in Colorado, and, and he moved to Colorado quite a few years ago. I haven't seen him either way, you know, it just, it just hasn't happened. Uh, I have another brother that lives in Des Moines, Iowa. Last, saw, last time I saw him was at my, at my father's funeral. And, you know, it just, it's, there's distance that occurs. They're not living in my milieu. They're not here. They're not in Portland. But I have great friends here that are truly, to me, more close, more common than my brothers. Praise God. Um, here's, a, here's another one. Here's another uh, great proverb. Whoever walks with the wise becomes wise. But the but the companion of fools will suffer harm. Isn't that, isn't, that, isn't that true? If you surround yourself with fools, you're going to suffer harm. But if you surround yourself with wise people, you will become wise. And this is, this is another interesting one. A friend means well even when he hurts you. A friend never hurts you on purpose. Amen? Amen. Kind of the last thing I want to deal with today is uh, I want to remind you, number one, about being intentional, and intentional on who you put in your inner circle of friends so that you, you can help move them forward and they can help move you forward in the Lord. That's good. Uh, that, that, that is a, a huge issue. Uh, don't let chance or luck determine who you're putting, putting in that inner, inner circle. Use prayer, use wisdom, use counsel, but build around yourself a team of people and be a person that can be around others in their team of people so that we can build one another up. So that we are advancing in the faith together. And that, that brings me to spiritual friendships. Uh, man, uh, value them. Value them like gold because they are the key 
to further growth and development in Christ. We disciple one another. Now, it's great to have a mentor. That's fantastic. But whether, whether you have a mentor who's ahead of you in Christ and assisting you along, or if you have uh, 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 those that are on the same level as you that you're, where you're working together with them, that's tremendous also. But also look for those who are younger in the Lord that you can bring into your circle and assist them in their growth. And in that way, we grow together as the body of Christ. Amen? Amen. Um, my encouragement to you uh, is today, as, as you go home, think about and pray about who am I for others? And, and how have I been supported in my faith life? And consider what you can do to grow in both of those situations. All right? That'd be great. Let's pray together, shall we? Father, we thank you for our time. We thank you for just the beauty of friendships in Christ. And truly, Lord, we are thankful for the opportunities that we have to minister together and to enjoy one another. Amen.